Hey, this is Brandon from Sweater Cat Designs, and in this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn about the different ways we can use the Pattern Along Path Path Effect, including how to use it to create custom brushes. To use Pattern Along Path, we first need a path that we want to repeat or stretch. I've created three paths here that I'll use to demonstrate. So first we select the path we want to use, and copy it into the clipboard with Ctrl C. Next we have to create another path or shape that we want to apply the path effect to. And now with the second path or shape selected, we open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects, then click this plus button down here, then choose pattern along path here. The path effect is now attached to the path, and in order to take this path that we copied into our clipboard and apply it as a pattern onto the other path, we have two buttons to choose from in here next to pattern source, paste path and link to path in clipboard. The main difference between these is that the link to path and clipboard button will allow us to modify the original pattern source path and have the changes be automatically applied to the other path, which is called the skeleton path. The paste path button, on the other hand, is the safer route, as we won't have to worry about messing up the pattern by accidentally modifying the original source path. But for the most part, I like to use the link button, because it's nice to be able to easily modify the appearance of the pattern. So I'll click the link button now. Okay, so what the effect does is it uses the copy path to shape the skeleton path, while keeping the skeleton path's fill and stroke information. If you want, we can give it a fill color by clicking a color down here. And we can turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking the red X here. Also, because we clicked the link button, we can now modify the source path, and it will modify the pattern as well. Another thing we can do is if we select the skeleton path again, we can change the width of the pattern, either in here, or by switching to the node tool and dragging this diamond handle here. We can still adjust the nodes of the skeleton path as well. Back in the path effects dialog, we have this pattern copies parameter. The default is single stretch, which gives us a single copy of the pattern stretched along the entire length of the skeleton path. If we change this to single, we just get a copy of the pattern that's the same length as the original. For repeated and repeated stretched, I'm going to use this path here. First I'll select it and copy it into the clipboard with Ctrl C. And this time I'll use a circle as the skeleton path. Now I'll apply a pattern along path to it and click the link button. Okay, for repeated, we get multiple copies of the pattern along the skeleton path. Depending on the sizes of the pattern path and the skeleton path, we might get a gap between the ends, like right here. To close in the gap, we can use repeated stretch, which will stretch the copies just enough to make them take up the entire skeleton path. If you want to add some spacing between the copies, we can use the spacing parameter here. This can also be a negative number. With a normal offset, we can move the pattern in or out on the path. With a tangential offset, we can change the positioning of the copies along the path. And with this pattern as vertical option, we can rotate the copies 90 degrees. Now a cool thing about this effect is that if we go to the pen tool or the pencil tool, we have the shape setting in the controls bar, and the from clipboard option actually uses pattern along path. So if I copy this lightning bolt shape path into the clipboard again, then go back to the pencil tool, and I'm also going to increase smoothing here. With from clipboard chosen, I basically have a lightning bolt brush. And I can continue drawing it by clicking and dragging at one of the endpoints. We also have the scale setting up here, which is the same as changing the width parameter in the path effects dialog. We can also do this with a pattern that we want to repeat, like this one down here. However, if I copy it into the clipboard, then use the pencil tool right now, it will default to single stretched. To fix this, we can change the path effects default parameters down here. This gives us a list of all of the parameters along with set and unset buttons for each one. If we click a set button for a parameter, whatever we have set for the parameter up here will become the new default for that parameter. 
So we can change pattern copies to repeated stretch, for example. Then click the set button next to pattern copies down here. And now when we use pattern long path again, it will automatically use the repeated stretch setting. If we also want to make it so the pencil tool will continue using the previous colors we chose, we can either double click the pencil tool icon in the toolbox, or we can click on this color information area for the tool at the top right. This brings up the preferences dialog, with the pencil tool preferences shown. Under style of new objects, we can choose the last used style option here. Now we can close out the dialog, and when we use the pencil tool again, it will use the previous color information. If you want to change the pattern back to the original default of single stretched, we can simply click the unset button for pattern copies. I'm also going to change the pencil tool color information back to the default. Alright, that's how we can use pattern along path. I encourage you to now try creating your own custom brushes using this effect. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next lesson.